Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Renu Tyagi from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we are discussing the module titled Neolithic Evolution under the paper Ecological Anthropology, Cultural and Biological Dimensions. The learning objectives of the module include number one, it will help the students to understand the concept of Neolithic evolution. This module will enable the students to gain insight into the various aspects of Neolithic evolution. Number three, the module will equip the students about the significance and contribution of Neolithic evolution. Now let us understand the concept. The Neolithic was originally identified primarily in terms of the appearance of stone tools made by polishing and grinding rather than chipping or flaking. Today, evidence of the presence of farming is the major criteria of the Neolithic. During the Paleolithic period, people depended on the wild plants for food or whichever nature provided for them. But whenever these favored sources of the food became scarce, people adjusted by increasing the variety of food eaten and incorporating less desirable foods into their diets. Over time, the subsistence practice of some people began to transform their ways of life as they became food producers rather than food foragers. Food production had important implications for humans. It has led people to lead a more sedentary life. The change of human as producer is a revolutionary one in human history that brought about many changes in human life. This happened during the Neolithic period and is popularly known as the Neolithic revolution. Now, what is Neolithic revolution? The Neolithic revolution involved far more than the adoption of a limited set of the food producing techniques. It is the only beginning to receive the attention it deserves. Men, the hunter had been freer men, the farmer was in the chain. The transition from reliance upon hunting and gathering to reliance upon agriculture is referred as the Neolithic revolution. It is one of the great turning point of the human history. Although it is neglected by economists, interest in the topic has grown hand in hand with attention to the determinant of long run economic growth including geography and institutions. The two principal features of this revolution were those concerned with the food supply, the domestication of the animal and the cultivation of the crop in subtropical land mostly cereals. The former ensured a supply of the animal food available at all times without the trouble and the risk of hunting and of secondary products, milk to drink, skin and hair for garments and so on. Today the evidence of the presence of farming is the major criteria of the Neolithic. The reason for the shift is that the farming permits an entirely new way of the life whereas it makes little difference in a hunter whether his knives and arrow points are flaked or ground into shape. In Europe, polished stone tools appear later than farming and their appearance sometimes is used in distinguishing between the early Neolithic and the later or full Neolithic. In other parts of the world, however, polished stone tool often are found among people without knowledge of the farming. 
the term neolithic was first coined by gordon child in 1923 to describe in the series of the agricultural revolution in the middle eastern history gordon child often called the neolithic a revolution because it opened the door to an entirely new way of life man began to produce his food and was less dependent upon the vegans of the nature men also could build more or permanent villages and live in the larger clusters moreover these larger cluster required much less land to survive and hence could be close together more people and more contact led to a faster rate of invention and much faster rate of diffusion finally the techniques of farming improved in favorable locations surplus permitted the support of non farming specialist and the carrying of more trade by a revolution child did not mean a sudden violent change in the men's way of living but that the practice of farming fed ultimately to a radical difference in the new people lives the first farming was carried on as a sort of side line by people for whom hunting and gathering still remained important the number of cultivated plants was few and farming techniques relatively unproductive initially only a sharpened stick served for cultivating and planting and grains were cut with crude sickles made by setting small stone blades in wood or baked clay handles even the hoe was not a great improvement and it was not until the invention of the plow and the use of the draft animals that farming really became a successful way of life in many parts of the old world the first beginning of the farming are not yet known one important center appears to have been the foothill or uplands valley which forms a semi circle about the lowland of mesopotamia this region appears to be one of the oldest known villages of the people who definitely were farmers in other parts of the old world history seems similar farming took nearly 1500 years to reach the sudan in east africa and perhaps as long as to become a well established in northwest india it may be that a second and the perhaps earlier center of the farming developed in south east asia as karl soer strongly believes centering around the cultivation of a quite different series of plant the village farming way of the life was accompanied by numerous other innovations at a fairly early date animal began to be domesticated whether the first domestication was made by farmers is still not certain it is evident however that the earliest domesticated animals were kept primarily for their flesh animals were used to draw plow and vehicles which is deemed as later development sedentary life also encouraged the use of the pottery instead of containers of the basketry or leather the neolithic potters offered the archaeologists the best evidence of cultural development and relation between cultures thus the village farming of the neolithic was a successful new type of adaptation that it spread widely throughout the old world figure 1 illustrate the shift from hunting and gathering phase to agricultural phase why human became food producers 
there are several theories which have been proposed to account for the change in human subsistence practices. Archaeologist Gordon Child theory based on a climatic determinism advanced the idea that the glacial cover over Europe to northern Africa and southwest Asia. When the glacier retreated northward, so did the rain patterns and as a result northern Africa and southwest Asia became drier and people were forced to congregate as oases for water. Because of the relative food in such an environment, necessity drove people to collect the wild grasses and seeds growing around the bases. Congregating in a part of Southwest Asia known as the Fertile Crescent. Now, let us understand the Neolithic material culture. Tool making pottery, housing and clothing are characterized in the Neolithic villages. Let us see the tool making. Early harvesting tools were made up of wood or bone into which the razor sharp flint blades were inserted. Later tools continued to be made by chipping and flaking. Stones during the Neolithic period were stone that was too hard to be chipped, grounded and polished for tools. People developed sites, forks, hoes and simple plough to replace their simple digging sticks. Mortars and pestles were used to grind and crush grain. Later when domesticated animals became available for use as draft animals, ploughs were redesigned. Figure 2 illustrates types of the tool used in the Neolithic period. Now let us see the pottery. In the Neolithic revolution, different forms of pottery was created for transporting and storing the food. Water and various material possessions because pottery vessels are impervious to damage by insects, rodents, etc. In pottery vessels, food can be boiled directly over the fire rather than by such ancient techniques as dropping stones heated directly in the fire into the food to be cooked. It was also used for pipes, lamps and other objects and some culture used large vessels for the disposal of the dead. Pottery containers remains important for much of the humanity today. The manufacture of the pottery requires artful skill and some technological sophistication. To make a useful vessel requires knowledge of clay, how to remove impurities from it, how to shape it into desired forms and how to dry it in a way that does not cause cracking. Pottery is decorated in various ways. For example, designs can be engraved on the vessels before firing or special rims, legs, bases and other details may be made separated and fastened to the finished pot. Painting is the most common form of pottery decoration and there are literally thousands of painted designs found among the pottery remains of ancient culture. Figure 3 provides glimpse of some of the potteries from the Neolithic period. Now let us see the housing. Food production and the new sedentary lifestyle brought about another technological development in the mode of human settlement. People started constructing houses for shelter and to protect them from the wild animals. Permanent housing is of limited interest to most food foragers who frequently are in the move. In the Neolithic dwellings became more diverse in type, some were constructed by wood while others included more elaborate shelter made up of stone, sun dried brick or branches plastered together with mud 
or clay sun dried bricks or branches plastered with clay although permanent housing frequently goes along with food production for example on the northwestern coast of the north america people live in substantial housing which could exist without food production for example on the northwestern coast of north america people lived in substantial houses made up of heavy planks from cedar logs their food consists entirely of the wild plants and animals especially the sea mammals let's see the clothing during the neolithic clothing was made up of woven textile the raw material and technology necessary for the production of the clothing came from several sources flax and cotton from farming wool from the domesticated sheep and silk from the silk worms let's see the social structure archaeologists draw certain inferences concerning the organization of neolithic societies ceremonial activities existed and little evidence of a centrally organized and directed religious life has been found during the neolithic revolution burials for example show a marked absence of social differentiation in early neolithic graves were rarely constructed of or covered by the stone slabs and rarely included elaborate objects hence no person from that period had attained the kind of exalted status that would have required an elaborate object in the smallness of the villages they have knew one another very well and were probably highly personal ones with equal emotional significance the neolithic revolution has been studied in lens of cereal cultivation almost entirely in areas of winter rainfall for the tropics with summer rainfall and comparatively few cereals but many root crops the picture is disjointed Oswald made an attempt to work out the Neolithic revolution in the tropics but although his idea are interesting with typically german thoroughness be forced into his picture a large number of imperfectly known facts and subsequent research has been compelled to reject many of his conclusions however little we can accept of what he wrote is that he pointed the way to an appraisal of non serial neolithic culture which it is now possible to explore the culture of neolithic settlement need to be understood a number of neolithic settlement have been excavated particularly in southwest asia the structures artifact and the food debris found at these sites have revealed much about the daily activities of their former inhabitants as they pursued the business of making a living perhaps the best known of these sites is jericho an early farming community in the jordan river valley of palestine excavation at the neolithic settlement that later grew to become a city of jericho revealed the farming community inhabited as early as 10.350 years ago to protect their settlement against these floods and associated mud flows as well as invaders the people of jericho built massive wall of stone around it within these walls an estimated 400 to 900 people lived in houses of mud bricks with plastered floors arranged around country yards in addition to these houses a stone tower that would have taken 100 people and took 104 days to build was located inside one corner of the wall near the spring let's see the neolithic and human biology from the studies of human skeleton from the neolithic burials physical anthropologists have found evidences for a lessened 
mechanical stress on people, bodies and teeth. The teeth of the Neolithic people generally show less wear, their bones are less robust and osteoarthritis is not as marked as in the skeleton of the Paleolithic and Mesolithic people. On the other hand, there is clear evidence for marked deterioration in the health and mortality. Skeletons from the Neolithic village show evidences of severe and chronic nutritional stress as well as pathologies related to infections and deficiency diseases. High starch diet led to increased dental decay during the Neolithic. Scientists have recently documented dental drilling of the teeth in the 9.000 year old Neolithic site in Pakistan. For the most part, the crops on which Neolithic people came to depend were selected for their higher productivity and storability rather than nutritional balance. The increased incidence of disease and mortality was probably the new mode of life in Neolithic communities. Sedentary life in fixed villages bring with it sanitation problems as garbage and human waste accumulated. Another factor was the close association between human and their domestic animals, a host of life threatening disease including smallpox, chickenpox and all the infectious disease of childhood that were not overcome by medical science until the later half of the 20th century. And these diseases were transmitted to human through their close association with the domestic animals. Now let us understand the Neolithic and the idea of progress. During this revolution, some societies continued to practice various forms of hunting gathering and others became horticultural small communities of gardener working with simple hand tools and using neither irrigation nor plows. They typically cultivate a variety of crops in small gardens they have cleared by hand. Some horticultural societies developed agriculture where agriculturists practice intensive crop cultivation employing plows, fertilizer and possibly irrigation. They use wooden or metal plow pulled by one or more harnessed draft animal such as the horse oven or water buffalo to produce food on larger plots of the land. Now let us summarize the module. So far we have understood that Neolithic revolution is the transformation of human societies from being hunter gatherer to agriculture. This revolution brought many changes to human society and culture. The term Neolithic revolution refers to both the period of time when it occurred as well as the enduring changes it caused. This is also known as the transition of many human culture from a lifestyle of hunting and gathering to one of the agriculture and settlement. The Neolithic revolution involved the adoption of a limited set of food producing techniques. Archaeological data indicates the domestication of various types of plants and animals evolved in separate locations worldwide. Starting the geological epoch of the Holocene, it was the first historically verifiable revolution in the agriculture of the world. The changes also include the way people lived and the types of art they invented. Neolithic sculptures became more widespread and it was used to store food harvested from farms. Thank you.